with all my worldly goods. Divorce, even between good-natured, amiable, educated people, is apt to stir up a dust cloud that covers and discolors all it touches. It is as if the sphere of intimacy, the unwatchful trust of, trust of shared life, is transformed into a malignant poison as soon as the relationship in which it flourished is broken off. Intimacy between people is forbearance, tolerance, refu refuge for idiosyncrasies. If dragged into the open, it reveals the moment of weakness in it, and in a divorce, such outward exposure is inevitable. It seizes the inventory of trust. Things which were once signs of loving care, images of reconciliation, breaking loose as independent values, show their evil, cold, pernicious side. Professors, after separation, break into their wives' flats to pilfer objects from writing desks, and well-endowed ladies denounce their husbands for tax evasion. If marriage offers one of the last possibilities of forming human cells within universal inhumanity, the universal takes revenge in the breakdown of marriage, laying hands on what had seemed accepted from the rule, subjugating it to the alienated orders of rights and property and deriding those who had lived in delusive security. Just what was most protected is cruelly requisitioned and exposed. The more generous the couple had originally been, the less they thought of possessions and obligations, the more abominable becomes their humiliation. For it is precisely in the realm of the legally undefined that strife, defamation, and endless conflict of interests flourish. The whole somber base on which the institution of marriage rises, the husband's barbarous power over the property and work of his wife, the no less barbarous sexual oppression that can compel a man to take lifelong responsibility for a woman with whom it once gave him pleasure to sleep, all this crawls into the light from cellars and foundations when the house is demolished. Those who once experienced the good universal in, in restrictively belonging to each other are now forced by society to consider themselves scoundrels, no different from the universal order of unrestricted meanness outside. The universal is revealed in divorce as the particular's mark of shame, because the particular marriage is in this society unable to realize the true universal.